Welcome to another video. I'm going to take a couple minutes and show you how I made this fire pit for truck camping and car camping. I wanted a fire pit that I could burn underneath a tarp, so I had to have a pretty hefty spark arrester on the top, and I really couldn't find anything suitable. So I decided to make one out of this old ammo can I was using as a quench tank for knife making. The first thing I did was scribe some locations on the bottom of the ammo can and then use the punch to leave a divot that I could run a pilot bit through and then drill a larger hole for these 3 8 threaded rods that I got for legs. got my holes drilled and then it was time to just check and make sure that the rod fit okay and it was pretty much a perfect fit. So I tossed my little vise on the crude workbench I set up here and put my threaded rod in here. The idea was to use these two pre-cut lengths and cut them in half. So I bought two of them, cut them in half, gives you four legs. repeat the process a couple times and then you'll have your four legs. Now I have these threaded rod couplings that I'm going to use to act as basically stops. You can leave the legs adjustable but I socked it down with a socket and wrench because I want it to be pretty stable so what I did was thread on one rod coupling and basically use the other to set the length and then I threaded the other one on the other side giving you a way to attach the legs to the ammo can and basically stop it from, from moving. So I tighten the top nut down, tighten the bottom nut down, and then you had four pretty solid legs. It's a little bit wobbly here because these are twisted Home Depot boards and they're obviously not very stable. Here you can see what I mean. The designated length is set by the threaded rod coupling and you know inside my oily, dirty ammo can. I went ahead and grabbed some expanded metal, cut that down to fit down inside of it, and the rod couplings with the threaded rod in them also act as stops for this. It's a little bit squishier than I would like to keep the fire off the bottom of the can and give it some airflow. So I drilled a couple of holes in which I'm going to insert a steel rod to give it a little bit more support. Once you put some wood in this thing, and that grate gets hot, it will obviously sag and touch the bottom of the can. And we don't want that because we need some good airflow going in this thing. So I took the steel rod and marked about an inch and a half for a bend and then probably six inches or so in length, bent the ends and then cut them off. So that way I could slide them in the can and they wouldn't slide all the way through. And it would also give me a handle basically to pull the rods out. So here you can see, I'm gonna slide them in real quick like, and then be able to drop my grate back down inside and it rests on those rods and the rod coupling ends. It's pretty solid. Fast forward a little bit. I cut the expanded metal to length for the ammo can and then bent a tab over on each side. The grate will rest on top and I can click on it and it will also support pots and pans. I cut a hole in the side of the ammo can so you could feed the fire when you put the lid back on. I removed the rubber gasket from the lid and drilled a bunch of holes so that I could have a fire inside and protect the tarp that was running overhead. That's how I solved that issue. I started it with a small fire just to get it going and see how she pulled and then I stuffed it pretty good to get the paint cooking off, obviously outside in a well ventilated area to get the stove hot. The side of it buckled a little bit but it worked out okay. I hope you got something out of the video, folks. If you did, give it a like. Any questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I really appreciate the support. We'll see you soon.